Imagine a planet so inhospitable that even your trusty robots will freeze. But your trusty robots are the only ones capable of bringing life back to this frozen planet. Craftomation 101, developed and published by Ludion.io, brings to life cute little robots that will execute your every order, no matter how convoluted it is. Through simple visual programming, you can automate them to craft objects from basic materials or combine those for more advanced recipes. But beware, the ever-present frost is always closing in, threatening to ruin your terraforming project. The good thing is, you can do every task yourself, but why do it? When you can slowly build a gang of self-sustaining robot workers and watch them execute your orders to terraform the planet. Craftomation 101 is still under development, but you can play it today. Download the demo version on Steam and give it a try, so you can get ready for the eventual full release at some point later in the year. Now let's check some gameplay. The ship lands and so my watch begins. Early on it's a bit of a tutorial start which is telling us to mine and combine stone. That gives us a spark which we can combine with coal to make fire. And fire will melt our frozen ship, giving us a bonfire that we can then light with fire melting more of the snow around. And thusly our first craft mate is born, Bob the Good. Combining stone and coal gives us a coal brick which is there to feed Bob the Good and give him energy. And this is where coding begins. We can tell Bob the Good to go find stone, then grab some more stone, combine those two, grab some coal, combine those to get fire, and then he can drop it on the bonfire to keep it fueled. After that he goes to idle, repeating the whole process. Go Bob, let's do this. And there he goes, slamming together, creating fire, fueling this place. Next we create a brick. Combining brick with coal gives us another bonfire. And that turns our frozen rocket into a command center. And now command center wants 15 stone to give us another craftomate and some research points. So I'm gonna tell our new craftomate to do just that. And here it goes. And that's the last stone he has to deliver, completing the quest. And this unlocks the whole research tree. First let's teach them how to eat. Bob and Todd both ran out of energy energy right now, so they can't actually do anything for me. But I can refuel them with coal bricks now. And to automate coal brick production, I'm gonna send 5th the Great to do it. That way we'll always have some of these stored in the storage. And I will manually complete this goal, which is gonna give us another craft to mate and some more points. Unlocking the low battery thing, which means I can now add energy check. If their fuel is fine, they'll go back to idle. If not, they'll go grab that coal brick eat it and then go to idle. Look at them go eat now and refuel, you'll love to see it. Next we need to unfreeze iron and that gives us keep the nimble as well. And combining iron with fire gives us steel. And steel is our command center's next goal, giving us two storage boxes. I'll tell Kip to go and start mining it and he's gonna drop it down here in the storage. Next we need to craft a steel plate and feed it to the command center, giving us more craft mates and some more points, which allows us to unlock even more cool stuff. Our next goal is to create sand. Combining sand with fire gives us glass and command center desires tan glass and the warm temperatures gives us more people, more craft mates to keep the fires going, leading to more complicated things. But that should now automate our production of sand. And with sand we get glass and that means another command center goal complete, giving us paint to eat so we can paint our little boys. Next we need to make a magnet. And to make a magnet, we'll need to produce more iron and steel. Combining these gives us magnet. And command center wants plenty of them. And that completes another goal and allows us to unlock even more research. With our next goal being to find some ice. And ice is quite far away. But the heater we just gained is gonna help us with that. It is fueled by batteries which we can't quite make yet though. But if we can melt our way there, we can get to ice. Combining fire with ice as you can imagine is gonna give us water. And adding fire to that, boiling water. And command center Center wants water now and Fev the smart is gonna be the one to get the water bringing it to the command center and while all that is happening we can get to some goodies with some clever bonfire hopping these chips will be very useful in the future giving us some new rewards after completing the water quest command center requires charged plates next and two of my fools got frozen over here clearly 
there was not enough bonfire fuels. But since we found chips, we can now make our own heaters. Heaters that can be fueled by power. And that should keep these guys from freezing out here. First, let's automate the production of steel plates. These will be stored down here. And next comes the production of magnets will be stored here. And if you can combine these, we get the charged steel plates. Finishing the next command center goal. And if you combine these with boiling water, we get batteries. Which is our next command center goal. Which is the next messy process I want to automate. And there it goes. Our first battery automated. And since iron production is low, I told another craft to mate to go grab it right now. But here comes our last needed battery. And now we can automate the whole process of making batteries for our own usage. Next, the game wants us to find a seed. And we can do that with some more clever bonfire hopping. There it is. All mine. Now the seed we can plant into more fertile soil. And then give it water to grow. And grow some more. And grow even more. At which point, we can start chopping wood and bringing the wood over to the command center. As you can see, our little tiny colony has grown quite a lot. There is, of course, a lot more to do. Now that you've seen some basic gameplay, you can formulate an idea of how everything works. The whole map is much bigger than what you've seen in this short gameplay, and there's enough resources on it to last you for a long while long enough to terraform the whole planet. With the visual programming you can automate every production chain in a way that works best for you and your little colony's needs. You can even automate the production of more robot workers to have your own private robot army. Who knows, maybe they'll add frozen aliens in the full release, either to have them as pets or to perform exterminatus on them. Both options are good in my opinion. Of course, there are still some small issues the game has. The whole programming UI is a bit clunky, especially when you unlock more orders via research. Currently, the game guides you in a direction it wants you to go for the first hour or so. I hope that eventually you'll be able to skip or ignore the tutorial and play in a direction you want, without the game holding your hand. Also different, randomly generated maps would make replaying Craftomation that much more satisfying. But as you've seen, Craftomation 101 is not fully finished yet. There's more research to come and more things to craft. While I don't tend to play games like this on my channel anymore, just the fact I took time to play it should tell you it's worth checking out. I thoroughly enjoyed it and can't wait to see what else is in store for it in the future. Now if you want to make it the best game possible on release, then check out the free demo and give the devs your feedback. Now go check out this video where I survived 10 years in Dwarf Fortress.